Welcome to Stupid Muslim Comments. This video series presents some of the amazingly stupid comments by Muslim YouTubers on my channel's debates and videos. Here are this week's top 5 picks. First up is a comment from SkullWarrior7123 who said, This video is totally fake. I read many parts of the Quran and many of my preachers say nothing that was shown in this vid during a service. None of this stuff in inner holy book. And plus, the Quran never changed ever since it was first written. We have the Quran and how it was originally written. I can't believe people still can't believe this stuff. And I hate how many atheists and Christians say that Muhammad married a six-year-old. This is in fact not true in the slightest. And no, I do not believe in any of your theories of evolution or death Big Bang. Show me evidence. We Muslims have the evidence of Allah being right. You know what it is? The Quran! We have full evidence of Muhammad being the Prophet Muhammad. My preachers, family, friends, and of course, the Quran. Women should always cover their faces and are inferior to men. And I might be getting a bit off topic, but Muslims don't eat pigs because they are very dirty animals. Muslims are very clean people who never resort to being filthy. You don't eat animals because you believe animals are just as good as people. Allah made animals worse than humans. Think about that. Lo Allah is merciful. I understand that my videos criticizing religious beliefs can be hard to hear, especially if you are a person who holds them as true. But I assure you, I take great effort to ensure that my statements are based on facts and not born of ignorance. It is not surprising that your preacher or religious leader does not address the dark, unpleasant bits contained within your religious tradition. Their role is to encourage you to stay and remain obedient, not question and potentially rebel. To a person who puts great value in revision and change, as society and knowledge advances, bringing up the stagnant nature of your particular holy book is unimpressive and discouraging. You may argue that the Quran is so perfect that it needs no revision, but you would be wrong to make such an assertion. Like most, if not all, religious holy books, they are chock full of ancient immorality once believed to be progressive and complete, and yet when analyzed by individuals who have no skin in the game, non-believers, their true archaic nature emerges. However uncomfortable the truth may be to a believer, Muhammad did in fact marry a six-year-old child named Aisha and consummated the marriage, i.e. raped her, at nine years old. I would suggest that you read Ibn Hisham, a 7th century historian, and also the Sahih al-Bakari Hadith. While it is true that some much later scholarship, 20th century in fact, try and challenge these ages, these attempts are half-hearted and an obvious desperate attempt to distance their prophet from the pedophile label. In regards to the old and tiring misunderstanding of what a scientific theory actually is, which I will explain in full later in this video, my suggestion is to get your science education from a qualified science teacher, not from an unqualified religious leader. Science and evidence is your friend. Take the time to get familiar with the copious amounts of accumulated knowledge amassed by our species. And lastly, I would like to address in short the few remaining remarks made. 1. The Quran is not evidence of Allah. It is a book written by man who claimed godly authorship. There is no way to confirm the truth of their claims. 2. Women should be free to live their lives clothed as they deem fit. Women are not inferior to men, and to argue otherwise demonstrates a bigoted worldview not based upon reason and evidence, but one of patriarchy. And 3. Pigs are not in fact all that dirty. They cover themselves with mud to cool off since they do not have the capacity to sweat like we do. I do not eat animals because I believe they have every right to life that I do, and I can live a healthy, happy life without their death. Next, Pakistan Defender had this to say. Two things to say to you. How did the first creature come? If it came from lightning or some other BS, then why can't we humans create it? Someone made bacteria. Who? Who created the universe last start in the Big Bang? Look at Ibn Sina. He was extremely religious Muslim scientist. He put Bismillah, Iraman, Ibrahim in the name of Allah the Most Merciful in his books. 
He was a religious scientist, so you cannot use science against religion since we started it. What this world sorely needs is mandatory basic science education. On a regularity that is both saddening and disturbing, religious people of all stripes continually exhibit a complete lack of understanding of the evolutionary theory and abiogenesis. Scientific inquiry is about coming up with the best explanation to describe how the universe and all that is contained within it works. Just because we may not yet know how life began on Earth does not demonstrate a failure of the scientific process and does not open up the door to supernatural explanations. Theists tend to jump on anything not yet understood and cram God into it and think they have solved all the problems. That, my fellow earthling, is called the God of the Gaps fallacy. Now on to the particular points made by the defender of Pakistan. 1. We are not yet completely sure how life first started, but scientists are working on it and their progress is promising. 2. Presuming that a someone made bacteria or the universe is already starting ahead of yourself. You cannot rightly presuppose a creator in your question without justifying it. 3. Ibn Sina, otherwise known as Avinchana, was indeed a great Persian polymath of the 10th century who contributed to the medical field for hundreds of years. His success and contributions in science in no way makes his religious beliefs more true or justifiable. History is full of religious people, many being devout Christians, who you would not point to as being evidence of the greatness of the Bible and Christianity. To claim that Ibn Sina started science is to give way too much credit to the man. Even if I were to grant you more claim to fame than is actually deserving, the scientific discoveries over the past few hundred years, all of which Ibn Sina was never aware of, have demonstrated that God lives in an ever-shrinking hole of mystery. Perhaps it's time to step out of the Middle Ages and join the rest of us in the 21st century. Our next comment is by Kedynamite and he said, When you're in trouble or danger, for example, on an aeroplane going through a thunderstorm and turbulence of some sort, it is human nature to say, please God, oh God. When in despair, you look to the skies and ask for help. If you think everything just came into existence by chance and nobody created it, then how did the moon get out there? How did the stars? How did the sun and all the other little planets? Yet you think there is no God at the end of the day. Everybody shouldn't force nobody's beliefs on nobody. Everybody is entitled to their own beliefs slash opinions. All you can do is state the obvious signs in life and let the people put together the rest of the jigsaw themselves. For example, you aren't born with money, but it's the most important product in this life. When you die, your money isn't going to go with you or help you. Life is short, temporary equals fact. Now, nobody on this earth can tell me that you're born for no purpose, just to work, make money, start a family, then die. Then that's it. End of. No more. All your life and money was a waste. No chance. Look at how many people come and go. If that doesn't answer your thoughts on a god or afterlife, then you're a lost brother. Peace. Yes, it's perfectly natural for humans to be frightened in tense and dangerous situations. Some people even call out to their imaginary gods for help. This proves nothing except that if you believe a god exists, and you are in fear of your life, you may chat him up for some assistance. This gets you no closer to proving that you are talking to someone other than yourself. Every god conceived by the human mind in all of history has been at some point called upon in situations of mortal danger. Do you therefore believe that Aphrodite, Apollo, Valkyries, Shango, Odin, Hathor, or any of the other countless other gods once believed in are real just because people at one time called upon their assistance? Why is your god, Allah, somehow special? In regards to the formation of the Earth's moon, the best evidence lends to the following account, as described by NASA scientist Dr. Jan Heldman. In regards to the stars, planets and the Big Bang, I would suggest you watch the following well-made video. I agree that nobody should have beliefs forced upon them, however questioning or correcting false beliefs should be encouraged and embraced. I believe in providing and receiving factual information and helping others learn not what to think, but how to think. 
Now on to this nonsense about money. Money is a means to an end for most, not the end itself. Money is only useful when it can be traded for something of equal value. What your purpose in life is, is yours to make, not someone else's to make for you. Would you like for your parents to choose who you will love and marry? How about what career you'll choose? No? Then why would you want some being telling you what your meaning of life is? Take control of your own destiny and make up for yourself what your life's goals are. Next up we have the intelligent and wise Abdu Kawarzmi who shares this nugget with us. I would like to point out there is a big difference between scientific theories and laws. People like you like to parade around YouTube acting as if your arguments are more strong because you're using science. Yet you don't know shit. A lot of science time period are theories. But that's led to the common belief that idiots like you believe that everything in science are theories. I agree, there is a difference between scientific theories and laws, just not in the way you think. A scientific theory is a well-substantiated explanation of some aspect of the natural world, acquired through the scientific method and repeatedly tested and confirmed through observation and experimentation. Scientific theories are testable and make falsifiable predictions and are typically the end result of a large collaborative effort over a long period of time involving a lot of people. This is to be contrasted to the commonly usage of the term theory, which typically means idea or guess. A scientific law, on the other hand, is a statement based on repeated experimental observation that describes some particular aspect of the universe. Laws differ from scientific theories in that they do not posit a mechanism or explanation of the phenomena. They are merely distillations of the results of repeated observations and describes what nature does under certain conditions. YouTube is full of people making all sorts of comments and claims, many of which are probably false to some degree. But if you have science and the scientific method backing your claim, you are in a defensible position from which to argue. If you believe in things without reason and evidence, then your beliefs are untestable and should be dismissed. Before throwing the claim that others are idiots for not knowing the meanings of words, it would be wise of you to confirm if in fact you know the definitions of those words. Otherwise, you come off as a loudmouth ignoramus. And lastly, we have Abdul Kalrim al-Bertali who said, Yet you can't disprove a single thing in the Quran that the scientific method can't be applied to. Don't talk about what can't be observed, the beginning of everything. Talk about things like embryology, the fresh and salt water barrier, the body of Ramses II, the sun being the center of our solar system, the expiring of the sun, human beings consisting of water, the earth being an oblate spheroid, the fact that the mountains function as pegs inside the earth to protect them against earthquakes, the historical accuracy backed by ancient hieroglyphics, etc. You people don't do any legitimate or objective research, and you don't ask any legitimate and objective questions. You're masters in the art of telling half-truths and using ridicule as a brainwashing technique. Most atheists are actually intellectual cowards. Clinging on to ridiculous and childish statements such as, there is no evidence for the existence of God, but you're not ready to examine the stuff I mentioned above. That's because of your intellectual fear. If only it were true that we cannot disprove a single thing contained within the Quran. Here are a couple of quick and easy examples for you to digest. 1. Stars are not meteorites, and they are not created by Allah to shoot down devils. 2. The moon does not emit light, but instead reflect it. This short list is by no means exhaustive of all the scientifically inaccurate claims found within the Quran. Now onto the specific proofs brought up in this comment. 1. Embryology, as described in the Quran, states that the embryo is initially formed out of the semen stored in the womb. But in fact, semen is the method to deliver sperm which fuses with the woman's ovum in her fallopian tubes, resulting in cell division and a journey back into the womb for implantation. 2. In regions where fresh and salt water meet, otherwise known as estuaries, the separation is not absolute and the two bodies homogenize. There is no barrier. 3. 
The Quran does not predict the Pharaoh's body being preserved and discovered in 1898, thereby proving a miracle and giving the Quran credibility. Scholars are in disagreement over the exact identity of the Pharaoh of the Exodus. Also, this story of the Pharaoh is not a new revelation since it appears in both the Bible and the Talmud, centuries before the Quran was ever compiled. 4. The Quran does not mention the sun being at the center of the solar system, but rather that the sun, moon, and the five planets known at the time revolved around the earth. 5. The Quran mentions the sun going along a path to an end. However, it is a stretch to think that this vague passage is in reference to the sun's death, but more likely in reference to the trip the sun makes across the sky. 6. The Quran not only claims that humans are mostly water, but that we also came from dirt, clay, and dust. We know that we are not composed of dirt, clay, or dust, so why should we take the one part it got right and the three parts it got wrong and assume anything divine? 7. The Quran does not state that the earth is an oblate spheroid, but rather it presents the case that the earth is ostrich egg-shaped, a prolate spheroid. 8. Mountains are not pegs that stop earthquakes, but rather the end result of either volcanic eruptions, tectonic plates colliding or undergoing subduction, or when fault blocks are raised or tilted. These areas are often hotbeds for earthquakes. And 9. Finding the mentions of a man named Haman in the Quran and ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs, while not in the Bible or Torah, is not a smoking gun to once and for all prove the Quran is divinely written. The hieroglyphs record an HMN, which could end up being anything from Haman to Hymen to Homini, since vowels are not present in any Egyptian hieroglyphs. Also, Maurice Bukai, author of the Bible, the Quran, and Science, accredits an unknown and unnamed expert that somehow resolves this issue. The reality is, those people who don't hold to your religious traditions, non-Muslim theists and atheists, can objectively look at the claims made and find where wishful thinking, creative historicity, and bias have crept in. The problem is that non-Muslim theists have the same problem when having their own religions examined through the lens of skepticism. Lashing out with emotional ad hominem comments demonstrates the lack of strength in your arguments and your inability to deal with criticism. These are not the qualities of someone who cherishes objectivity and legitimate and honest research. There you have it. Five stupid comments from five different YouTubers. Which comment would you vote to win the Dumbass Comment of the Week award? Would it be 1. Skull Warrior 7123 who doesn't want to admit that his prophet married and raped a young child? 2. Pakistan Defender who thinks that just because there once lived an intelligent Muslim scientist, therefore there is no conflict between science and religion. 3. Kedynamite believes that frightened people who ask for protection from their god proves that a god exists. 4. Abdu al khwarizmi who like many theists fails to understand what a scientific theory is. Or 5. Abdu Kalrim al bertali who believes that the Quran stands up to the scientific method. To vote, leave your choice in the comment section below. Choose only one winner. Results will be available on my Facebook page one week from today. Want to appear in a future video? I love fan contributions and helping other YouTubers get some much needed attention and subscribers. So if you would like to send in an audio or video reading of a Quran or Bible verse for a future video, email me at veganatheist at hotmail.com. If you haven't yet done so, check out my website, forum, and store. On theveganatheist.com, you will find all my past videos, resources, and links. If debating and sharing your theist, atheist, vegan, or non-vegan position is more your game, then join the forum. Our growing community is looking for interesting, intelligent discussions, so if you fit the bill, we would love to hear from you. And lastly, check out the Vegan Atheist store where 100% of the profits are donated to secular charities, podcasts, and grassroots activists. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it and want to see the channel grow and new videos uploaded, show your support by giving a thumbs up, sharing, and subscribing to my channel here. Subscribers get notified the moment a new video is uploaded onto YouTube. Also, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. All links are in the description below.